Okay, this is like the auntie time I'm doing this video, you guys. Let me explain. So, I've been doing videos since I got this phone. I've had this phone for about a week. So, I use, it's only a 16 gigabyte, 32 gigabyte. It's a small gigabyte. Because the, the phone I'm getting going to be 100 and something gigabytes. And I don't delete my videos as I do it. And I do like... 14 minute videos then I go edit them, but I don't delete the video then I had to edit the video on there and Anyway, I had used up all the stories So I was trying to tell you guys about this video this movie I went to see and it kept clicking me out So then I woke up my son. I was like, can you tell me how to do it because it's your fault I got this freaking iPhone. Yeah, I did that and uh, He couldn't he was too sleepy to figure out pissed me off. So I said I'll come in here and figure it out and I figured it out Okay, so what the iPhone do is when you delete the shit it put it in a deleted file. Then you have to go to the deleted file. And it'll be sitting there for 30 days. To, so you can make up your mind whether you really want to delete it. So you have to delete it out the deleted file. And then it's gone forever. So now they're gone forever. And I'm not putting nothing on this phone that I want to keep a long time. Because I know in the December 1st part of January, I'm going to get the bigger um, iPhone. And then at that point, I should know whether I want an iPhone forever, ever. Or if I want to go back to my Android. Okay, let's get into this movie. I went to see uh, Girl on the Train. I'm going to try to do this quickly because it kept taking me 10 minutes or more to do it. But, like Actually, more because at 10 minutes, it clicked me out because I ran out of space. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I went to see Girl on the Train. Long story short, girl was married to a dick. The dick... Uh, she was an alcoholic. She blacks out. He was beating her ass when she black out and telling her that she... And tearing up shit like busting windows and just acting a straight donkey. And telling her that she was doing that shit. And she was like, I can't believe I was doing shit like that. Right? So they end up getting divorced and he married another chick. She's looking at that like, oh my God. He is like, they're perfect. Why we couldn't be that? Women, I'm guilty of it too. When we leave a relationship, even if we don't admit it out loud, sometimes when you see your ex with somebody else outside looking in, you like, why he couldn't be like that with me? He's like awesome with her. They're like so happy, but you don't know what's going on in that house. So the same dick that he was to you, he's probably to her. She just ain't caught on to it yet. Or, you know, everybody can tolerate different shit. And then people do change sometimes. So it's all three of those could be a factor. Anyway. She didn't know he was addicted to her because she was drinking. He was giving her the liquor. She was drinking. He was getting her drunk because he knows she'd get drunk to the point of blacking out and not know what's going on. And then that way he could fuck all the hoes he want to. So, <clears throat> she started living vicariously through another couple. I'm guilty of that as well. Because my best is Alabama friend. Outside looking out in. Seeing to have the perfect relationship. And she has an awesome relationship. But no relationship is perfect. But sometimes I'll find myself living through her. Because I would love to have a committed married relationship. I don't have that right now. I'm single. I'm not the single chick. I don't like being single. So sometimes I find myself living vicariously through her. And that I would like to be married. So anyway, she was living vicariously through the guy. And the woman that she didn't even know though. She didn't know him. She just... Assumed that they had this perfect thing going on. Fast forward to her seeing the lady. One day she see the lady with a man that is not her husband. And it appears that she's having an affair. Now the bitch was having an affair. But not with the guy that she saw with. And so she got off the off the train and decided she was going to confront the woman. And then she had a blackout episode. What happened when she blacked out is that her, hus her ex-husband saw her. Her ex-husband was having an affair with the bitch. It wasn't the guy that she thought was having an affair. And then the husband saw her, whooped her ass, knew she was going to black out and not remember it, got back in the car with the lady, and took the lady on wherever he was going to take her. So when she break up all battered and blue, bruised, she went to the uh, to uh, Alcoholics Anonymous and told him, you know, I fucked up and I blacked out and I, I want my life back. So today is day one of me being sober. So she's trying to be sober again. So then she ends up involving herself in the lady life because the lady comes up missing. Come to find out at the end of the movie that the husband, actually, her ex-husband was fucking that lady and killed that lady. And um, 
But anyway, she puts herself in the lady's family life. Like with her husband, she started talking to the husband, told the husband that the lady was cheating out, cheating on. She didn't know what was going on, really. But she just throwing shit out there. And then so when the husband showed her the lady psychologist, she was like, yeah, that's him. So she decided to start seeing the man's, the lady psychologist. And so in seeing him, she starts to remember little things that happened while she black out. So eventually on the train, she sees her ex-husband's boss's wife. And she goes to apologize to her because the ex-husband told her she acted a fool at a party and that's what got him fired. And the lady's like, well, that's no need to apologize. You know, we all drink a little bit too much. Then she said, yeah, but I clowned at your, at your party and I really wanted to apologize to you, but my husband didn't want me to at the time. Then she said, no, if you had clowned at my party, I would remember. You got a little tipsy. I let you go in the guest room and go to sleep and then your husband took you home. She said, your husband got fired because he couldn't keep a dick in his pants. Your ex-husband got fired because he couldn't keep a dick in the pan. And she was like, oh, damn, okay. So then in that, in her going with the psychologist of the lady who was dead and talking to this lady, all her memories started to come back. And so then she remembers that she saw the man with her ex-husband with the chick. Okay, what happened with that was the ex-husband had picked up the chick and took her to the forest because that's where they used to like to fuck off. And the lady told him she was pregnant. He got pissed off. Told her she needed to get an abortion or put it on her husband. And she said, well, I wanted to be with you. And so he essentially kills her in the forest. And uh, come home and act like ain't shit happened. Now, the wife that he's with now, he was cheating on his wife with this broad. And got her pregnant. And then he kicked his wife out. That's the lady that was on the train. He kicked his wife out of the house. Divorced her. Married this chick because she was pregnant. I'm assuming because she was pregnant. And got her a nanny. A nanny is the, the nanny is the chick that he killed. Yeah, it's all in the way. The nanny is the chick that he killed. He moved her in, like, to come over and help her with the child. And come to find out he was fucking both of them. And the lady only started helping with the child because she wanted to be close to him. And then she asked him why would he want her to move in with him and the child. He like, because I can have two bitches in my house fucking them at the same time. I mean, shit, nigga, what? I wasn't never going to leave my wife. I don't want you and I don't want no more kids. So you need to uh get rid of that child. And she was like, I ain't going to get rid of her. So he kept so then all of this stuff started coming to his wife's remembrance. Now in the interim, she did, was drunk one day and came over there and picked up the baby while the wife was asleep. And uh, then when the wife woke up, she saw the lady, she saw the ex-wife holding the baby. So it looked like she was trying to steal a baby, but she wasn't. And so all the while, the husband is telling the wife, yeah, she crazy. When she get drunk, she, she gets real violent. You don't want her around. And so got the wife kind of scared of the lady because she think, the lady cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, for real. So then the lady shows up, and she goes to tell her, you know, he's cheating on you. She said, I know he was cheating on me. No, no, she said, he's he's a cheater. And she said, I know, me and him cheated. I cheated with him for months under your nose, and you ain't no shit. Like, she was proud of it. And then she said, well, she's cheating, he's cheating on you now. She said, I know. Then she said, well, he killed such and such. She said, I don't believe it. She's like, yeah, yeah, that's what happened. So... Then the husband came out, and she confronted him, and he pulled her into the house and tried to get her to drink so he could make her black out, and maybe she wouldn't remember it. She wouldn't drink nothing. She was like, no, I know what you did, nigga. And then so he, uh, he bashed her in the head with the drink. All the while, his wife is just standing there holding the baby looking stupid. So then when she come to, he's like, <coughs> you, you like a, uh, 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 a mutt, you know, no matter how bad I beat you, you keep coming back. And she's like, no, I ain't coming back for that. I know what you did, and, and uh, I'm going to report you. And so he starts to choke her. She finds some bashing in the head with it. All the while, his wife is just standing there looking stupid. Now, she done laid the baby down in the nursery. Now, she just looking. So she takes off running. He runs behind to catch up with her, turn her around, and get ready to start choking her. And she stabs him in the neck with a corkscrew. So then... His wife comes out, because he ain't dead now. It's just stuck in his neck. Like, if you get an amulet, they could perhaps remove it and he not be dead. But his wife goes to screw it in there even tighter. Because <laughs> she, she told him, yeah, 
I found the chick phone in your stuff. So obviously you were with the chick. I don't know whether you killed her, but you was with the chick. So he was like pretty much like I'm busted. But I'm gonna kill this bitch and we we can and I guess in his mind he figured him and his wife would cook up. She was stalking and everything. But so at the end the police came and took the wife and took the ex-wife and he was dead. And so the ex-wife was like, I mean, it was self-defense. If I ain't kill him, he was going to kill me. And then so she talked to the wife. She said, yeah, it was self-defense. If she ain't kill him, he was going to kill her. And he killed the other lady. My husband did. And so the lady got off. But the lady didn't actually, if you really look at it, the lady, the ex did not actually kill him. His wife did. She stabbed him, but his wife killed him. <laughs> so it was real good. And I'm at 10 minutes and 58 seconds. Woo! I did good. So, yeah. This is today. Uh, November 5th video for your ass. <laughs>